Mother Teresa once said that ignorance is the mother of devotion, and indeed this has become the credo of the current Roman Catholic Church. Good evening everyone, this is John the Jansenist, and tonight I am going to be talking about a topic that runs very close to the history of my very own belief system and the church that I attend. And this pertains specifically with the alleged saint known as Margaret Mary Aloke and the doctrine of the Sacred Heart which developed out of her so-called teachings. Let me just uh, say for starters that if anyone looks at early church history, there is almost always a woman involved in the most grotesque of heresies that have developed in the early days of the church. It is essentially what some could rightly call Jezebel syndrome. Indeed, I believe there is a very good reason why women should be prohibited from exercising offices normally attributed to men, and this is something that is uh, sometimes followed through on and sometimes not followed through on in the old Catholic Church. Many of the affiliates of the Union of Utrecht have modernized uh, significantly, and they've grown a little bit lax on this, but rest assured, I am very consistent on this particular issue. So basically, to sum up, <clears throat> the mystique of Margaret Mary of Aloke is centered around the height of the Jansenist uh, dissenting dissenters of the Catholic Church of the 17th century, particularly in France. And the source material for what I am about to read uh, can be located on catholicplanet.net. I've provided a link in the description, and I'm just going to read some snippets of what was placed on here. And this is basically in keeping with the current Jesuit teaching on the history of Jansenism. In a sense, this is the story of Mary Margaret herself, of love and of lack of love. She who was herself the great apostle of lo love, <laughs> I'll bet. At that time, the great heresy of Jansenism had France by the throat. Jansenism was a branch of Catholic thought that emphasized original sin, human depravity, the, nece the necessity of divine grace, and predestination. Originating in the writings of the Flemish theologian Cornelius Otto Jans Jansen, uh, you neglected to mention that he was also the Bishop of Ypres, but whatever. Jansenism formed a distinct movement within the Roman Catholic Church from the 18th, 16th to 18th centuries, uh, but was condemned by the Roman Catholic Church as heretical. It may be thought that a heresy like Jansenism might be just a wrong way of thinking with little effect on the spiritual life. It was in no way a wrong way of thinking but I do concur with you that it did have a big effect on spiritual life. Because of it, there was actually something resembling spiritual life within Roman Catholicism rather than just ignorant superstition. But I digress. But not so. Heresy can and does destroy the spiritual life, such as the Pelagian heresy that has gripped Rome. In this case, its great remedy was the apparitions of the Sacred Heart, causing France and the world to reflect on the great love and mercy of God. Yes, my friends, whenever all else fails, uh, when the ecclesiastical errors and the appeals to authority fail, Rome will always resort to beatific vision, visions that are often woefully unsubstantiated and often in direct contradiction with Scripture. But continuing on... A good example of Jansenism was found at the great convent of Port Royal, where nuns were Jansenists and have been described as pure as angels and as proud as devils. Yes, I was looking forward to a good bit of slander on the part of the Jesuits on Port Royal, probably the last bastion of true piety within Rome. Poor Mary Margaret, Margaret Mary, was to directly contact such devilment from many of the sisters she encountered when she entered the convent. Margaret had two very big faults as far as these sisters were concerned. Firstly, she just wasn't high society enough. Oh. <laughs> 
says the Jesuit meddlers who always involved themselves in the politics of national governments. But continuing. And second, she didn't bring enough money as a dowry and thus was a burden on the community. Oh, saints be praised. The Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuits, the kings of usury and corruption in the realm of indulgence are complaining about the issue of dowry. Not to mention this is a holy order that prides itself on lying uh, in the defense of God's church, thus we can't really take anything they say verbatim. But continuing on. They made Margaret suffer, and suffer greatly, even going as far as to drag her out of her cell one night and giving her the most severe beating. Oh, pray tell! How can this be substantiated? But, nonetheless, continuing. One of these sisters had a terrible deathbed scene when the devil appears to have manifested at her bedside quite openly. Wow, another outlandish claim to beatific vision that is probably unsubstantiated. If we get any more uh, unsubstantiated claims of beatific vision, it'll be hard to tell whether I'm listening to Jesuits or the Prophet Muhammad. Anyway, continuing on. Another, Margaret prayed for them all was said by Margaret to have to spend her time in purgatory until the end of time in order to atone for them. Oh, great, now we appeal to the mythical land of purgatory. The visions of Margaret Mary are very majestic and very beautiful, so are many works of fiction. But continuing, the fourth apparition, known as the Great Apparition, occurred on June 16, 1675. It was during this apparition that Jesus asked for the great feast of the Sacred Heart. On that day he revealed his heart, saying, Behold this heart that has so loved men that it has sh spared nothing, even to exhausting and consuming itself, in order to show them its love. And in return I receive from most men only ingratitude by their irreverences and sacrileges, uh, such as the really lax standards on receiving the sacraments which the Jesuits were pushing, uh, but continuing on, and by the coldness and contempt which they showed to me in this sacrament of love. But what wounds me yet more deeply is that this is done by souls who are consecrated to me. This is why I ask that the first Friday after the octave of Corpus Christi shall be kept as a special feast in honor of my heart by receiving of communion upon that day. Yes, we need another day to give communion to lax believers and people that make false distinctions between sin in order to make themselves feel more comfortable in their uh, delusions of salvation. But anyway, continuing on. And by making a reparation of honor for all the insults offered to the host during its exposition upon the altars. And I promise that my heart will pour out abundantly the power of its love upon those who pay it, or who cause others to pay it honor. Now, I have spoken in a very mocking tone regarding this specific uh, and alleged quotation by Jesus because it is a quotation that is unscriptural, therefore it is unbinding, and it is also in direct contradiction with the early traditions of the early church, which are perfectly compatible with scripture. And we are repeatedly admonished in scripture to beware of false messiahs such as the man of perdition who was currently running the Roman pontiff. To basically sum up my views on this, Margaret Mary Aloke perfectly embodies everything that's wrong with Roman Catholicism. The veneration of women often at the expense of true believers combined with a very weak and desperate appeal to mysticism in order to cover up for the fact that their church has fallen into egregious error. It cannot be said more plainly enough that the Jansenist view and the resulting ultra Gentine view is at odds with present-day Roman Catholicism and that no reconciliation can occur absent a complete repudiation of these encroachments upon the true faith of Christianity. So in closing, I would just like to state the following. The Jesuit order is not to be trusted, and whenever they publish stuff like this, 
it insults my intelligence, and I am always the poorer for it for having read it, yet it is necessary that I read it to demonstrate to all of you, be you old Catholic or Protestant, what these people are capable of in the name of their alleged church. And on the matter of the great saying of Mother Teresa, which I think was true even before she said it, if you look at the example of St. Margaret Mary, ignorance is not the mother of devotion. Ignorance is the mother of heresy. In nomine Patris et Filiae et Spiritus Sancti, God be with you.